There you go. Good afternoon, everyone. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Add the load. We should be starting here. Let's see. Maya says meeting is now streaming live. Yeah, it looks like we are live. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I am Tedra Perkins, Child and Adolescent Coordinator from Odyssey Family Counseling Center. And I'm Elise Payne. I'm the School-Based Program Coordinator at Odyssey Family Counseling Center. And we are representing the South Fulton Mental Health Collaborative. So we are in, we collaborate with Fulton County Schools to bring health and wellness around mental health as well for the South Fulton community. And so now, because of our new normal, we are now doing things a little bit differently where we are streaming live and giving virtual workshops and seminars to help our community. And so just a little bit about South Fulton um, Mental Health Collaborative, I will let Elise go ahead and let everyone know and just a little details about our collaborative and then we'll move into our topic for today. Uh, thanks, Tedra. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, the South Fulton Mental Health Collaborative is um, operated and kind of managed by Odyssey Family Counseling Center, which is a nonprofit community counseling agency in College Park. We are lucky, lucky, lucky to be partnered with um, Fulton County Schools and the South Fulton Parents for Education group. Um, so we have members on our team who help create and uh, design this, these events and come up with ideas um, from both of those other entities. So that's Fulton County Schools and the South Fulton Parents for Education group. So we feel really honored to be able to work in partnership with them. I'm looking at my notes at the same time as I'm talking. So if I seem a to the side, that's what I'm doing. Um, the collaborative was created to create opportunities and resources regarding mental health uh, for youth and families in the South Fulton County Schools uh, area. We are partnered um, with those two partners, and um, our goal is to increase the knowledge and de of, around mental health issues and decrease st the stigma and shame that kind of comes with talking about mental health topics. Um, it's something that a lot of people struggle with, and so we just want to be clear. Mental health, everyone has mental health, just like you have physical health, and just because somebody might have some concerns or issues related to it is not very um, uncommon, and it's very easy to find resources. So our hope is to be able to help connect this community with resources. Um, we've hosted several events um, over the last uh, year and a half or so. Um, we've hosted um, a resource fair at Westlake High School. We also hosted a seminar um, with Dr. Sarah Vinson, who is a psychiatrist um, and who works here in the Fulton County area about managing stress during the holidays. And that was last November. We hosted that at McNair Middle School, if I remember correctly, Tedra. Yes, that is um, correct. And so that's a little bit about what we've done. We were also going to do some events in April, but of course the global pandemic ended those events for us ahead of time. So uh, this is how we are uh, attempting to connect with our community. So please like and share our Facebook and Instagram. We're at South Fulton MHC on both of those platforms um, where we are sending out resources, giving some uplifting information, talking about um, different areas of interest in the mental health uh, community. And definitely, if there's anything that you all want to help us with and letting us know what is most helpful and useful for your community, please reach out to us. Do not hesitate to email us, reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook. So just let us know what you all think is more is the most that could be the most use for your community. Because although we are collaborating with the schools and we are bringing you all information that we think will be useful, but you are the ones that are in the community and we want to hear you. We want to come out. All of our meetings, even when they were in person, is for the community. So for teachers, parents, students, family members, everyone is invited to all of our meetings. So please join us now virtually, but join us so that we can hear from you because this is for you. We want to hear from you. So right now we're going to do a six week series. 
to where we're going to discuss different things with mental health and wellness and also have some topics that you all bring to us. So if you all say that you need stress management or you need to focus on how to function with routines because now we're at home and kids are at home. So now how, to, how am I now this basically, I'm a homeschool teacher now. And how do I navigate that? Um, so definitely reach out to us, let us know some topics and things that you all have so that we can implement that in our series as well. So I'm just gonna go through just our six weeks and then we're gonna get into the topic for today which is community and social isolation. So next week on August the 5th, we have resetting our routines. So we know our routines have, since March, have been just out of whack. We have had routines that we knew that this was our plan. This is what we were doing. This is spring. Summer was going to be exactly like this. And then a change happened. So now it's resetting those routines. How do we implement ourselves back into the schools without actually physically being in the school building? And now, how do we work on sleep schedules that, of course, are probably off? How mm -hmm. do we eating schedules that we know are probably off? And so, how do we reset that to where we could just decompress and it works for everyone? Because when we don't have those routines in place, it can be very stressful. It can be stressful for parents and guardians, as well as the students. So, that's what we're going to talk about for next week. Please join us for that. We have a great speaker that's coming. Um, then we have August 12th, we have resources for universal remote learning. School starts August 17th. So we want to help you all before we even get there. Before we get into school, we want to help you all with some resources that could be very helpful during this time. And then we'll, of course, give you some more as time goes on. But we want to go ahead and just start you on a great foundation starting school. Then we have August 19th, which that's your topic. Whatever you all choose, please email us again, reach out to us on Facebook. You could also reach out to the South Fulton Parent Group and let them know, hey, these are some ideas that we think will be useful for our community. So that is your day. You let us know what you're thinking. Um, August 26 is resiliency. Then we have September the 2nd. Again, that's a you day. You bring your topics to us and then we'll um, speak on those topics and then find a great speaker for you. Again, these topics can change. They don't have to be the same topics. If you all notice that we really don't need to talk about resources for universal remote, remote learning, that's okay. We'll do something different and then um, whatever it is that you all need. So those are our topics that we're going to have over the next six weeks. We hope that you can join us. Tell a friend, tell another parent, Tell, tell some students, because this is for them too, and let them know, hey, we have this going on every day. Also, let us know if this time doesn't work well for you all, because we want to do a time that works well. So if 12 o'clock isn't the optimal time and you all need something different, please reach out to us and let us know. Tetra, I want to remind them that we yes. have a survey that um, I just recently posted on our Facebook page. I'm also going to put it in the comments below. So I'm watching the comments and I'm going to post that link in the comments, but it's also on our Facebook page. That survey is where we will determine, you know, some information too. So please give us your feedback. We're ready to meet you where you are. Yes, thank you. So Going into community ice and isolation. So we know for the past few months, we have been just in a different world. We've been somewhere that we, no one could have anticipated. When we thought we were coming into 2020, we were like, oh, the vision, and this is what we're gonna do for 2020. And we have the 2020 vision, all these goals, and all these plans that have just taken a different turn. And so now we're working on the new normal. We're working on something that is different, but it also has a lot of, even though there's a lot of downfalls, it also has a lot of positive benefits to it. And so we've been isolated from one another, we've been social distancing, and haven't been able to have as many community events as we have had before. So now how do we navigate that? How do we navigate the new normal and still building a community even within this pandemic. Because community is important. You have to have community because it gives you support. It gives you someone else that's like, okay, I understand 
where you're coming from. I have empathy for you, or I can just be a listening ear, or I know someone else that has experienced and has going through what you're going through. At this mm -hmm. time, we're actually all going through it together. We're all going through the isolation together. Like Elise and I, we're in the same building. Yep. We are in different <laughs> offices. When before we would have been right here together in the same office. Um, well, it, it actually, this forum would have been actually a live forum with everyone in person. And mm -hmm. so we're experiencing this as well. And it's just now thinking about how can we still just build that community? How can we still have support? And so mm -hmm. health is the same as physical health. Sometimes we don't think about it. We just say, okay, I need to eat. I need to make sure that physically I'm healthy, but not really thinking about it where if mentally I am not healthy, then everything else seems to go with it. So if mm -hmm. I'm stressed, if I'm not in, if I have anxiety, if I'm dealing with depression, all of those things can weigh heavy on your physical health as well. If you've noticed like a lot of times when you feel extremely stressed, how you're more prone to, to catch a cold mm -hmm. or you're, you feel exhausted, you feel like, oh, I just cannot get up. Why is it that I'm so tired and I cannot get up today? That's because you're stressed. Mentally, you're, you have been at capacity. You have now gotten to the point to where you're like, okay, I now need to do something to boost that and to increase like that mind, body, and just that spiritual piece of myself. So understanding that mental health is just as important as all of the other aspects that we have. And so even though we know that we have to isolate to protect ourselves and we have to, and because it's safe and it's healthy for us, how can we still continue to survive during this time? And so it's investing in community during, in, during the global pandemic. And how can you do that? So if you can't meet face-to-face, -face, you can do something like this. You can have a virtual meeting. So with now having children at home and doing school at home, it is a little bit more difficult. And we know that. We know that it's a little bit more challenging because that's not what we're accustomed to. And so form a parent group. Form a group to where, hey, I know this parent is great at math, or I know this parent's child is great at math, that we can get together and we can have a math study group. I know that this other parent is great at science or social studies or ELA, form mm -hmm. groups to where you can say, hey, we need some more support in this area. Because even though you have your teachers virtually, it still is, it still can be a little bit challenging when it's like, oh, I'm at home, I'm trying to help my student with this, and I'm trying to work at the same time. And so it's like, get, get those support groups together to where you can do that. Have co-ops, have say, hey, we're instead of doing an in-person field trip, let's do a virtual field trip. Let's say, you know what, we are going to virtually go to the zoo or virtually go to the aquarium. Because a lot of things that people didn't know prior to the pandemic is that the zoo has it to where like you can watch the pandas and mm -hmm. do that all day. You can just sit online and watch the pandas at the zoo. And the aquarium probably has something very similar to that. And so now, hey, we're doing a, a trip, a field trip to the aquarium. We're doing a field trip to the zoo, but now you're doing it in the comfort of your own home. And you can do it in a form like this on Zoom or you could on Facebook, any other video platform and it still feels like you are there. Mm -hmm. um, we have even like helped out other people where they're like, oh, 4th of July came and I would love to be able to be out there with fireworks. But unfortunately, fireworks weren't always going on everywhere, but people have gotten creative. They had virtual fireworks. And we've even said, hey, go on YouTube, look at fireworks around the world. Instead of just having to look at fireworks in your neighborhood, now you see something different. So get very creative. Connect with your spiritual um, and faith-based groups. A lot of organizations are doing um, sermons and groups online now. Connect mm -hmm. with them. 
get into one of those groups for support. Oftentimes we have had it to where our schedules are so busy and we're like, okay, no, I have to be up from this time to this time. There's something that I'm doing all day. And the travel piece, because we all know Atlanta and the traffic is horrible. You can't get anywhere in less than 20 minutes, even exactly. if it's just down the road. <laughs> yes. And so it's, you can literally be looking at the exit and then notice, I, I just still can't get there. And you're frustrated. So then by that time, you, do, you don't have the energy to go anywhere else. You're like, you know what? I'm not going to this group that I signed up for. I'm not going to this yoga class that yes, I paid for it, I've invested in it, but because I, at this point, I am so frustrated, I don't even wanna go. But now, because we have things that are virtual, that is the benefit in everything. Even with all the challenges that we see right now, that is the benefit that now you can join parent groups, you can join low yoga lessons and other classes that mm -hmm. have often been putting off. And so I know me personally, I, I put the pandemic as an excuse of why I cannot exercise. That is not an excuse. There, there are so many channels on the TV now that are like, oh, here's mindfulness, here's exercising and different variations of exercise. And it doesn't even have to be anything strenuous, but I, I can honestly say, I, I definitely had an excuse of, I, I can't do it because it's a pandemic going on. And it's like, no, you actually could do it more mm -hmm. pandemic going on. Take, make use of those things. Take advantage of all the new avenues and the shift that we have made just culturally and worldwide. And definitely just be able to use that. You can do um, apps like House Party, Zoom, Facebook Watch Party, Marco Polo, and there's a lot of other visual and um, virtual platforms that you can just do. And a lot of these are free too. So it's not like there's money that you're investing in it. It's just free apps that you can download to where you can play games. So your kids can have a play day. They can now say, okay, here, have a moment with your friend where you all can play. A lot of kids like to play heads up. You can play heads up on these virtual apps. And then there's other things as parents that you all can do is say, hey, we're going to have a parent night and it's just a night without kids and we are sitting and we are enjoying one another. This is a, a just a stress relief. We're now having self-care because remember in all of this, the thing that we can hold on to is making sure that we have self-care. If there's nothing else, making sure that we say, hey, I need to make sure that I take care of myself because in order to take care of others, I have to be well it, in addition to caring for other people. So then join those groups, do some advocacy work, volunteer. There's a lot of different events that's going on with social justice, other advocacy, um, volunteering, and that you can join to now, it's, it's giving you other things to do and other outlets that instead of just thinking about the fact that we're isolated. Because if when you're sitting there, you're thinking about isolation, you can at times feel very anxious. You can also feel symptoms of depression coming on. And when you're noticing those things, reach out for support. Take online um, classes, reach out to other organizations. Like our organization, Odyssey Family Counseling Center, we are doing um, virtual sessions and we are, so we're still doing telehealth even during this time. Reach out to an organization, even if it's not Odyssey, even if it's a different organization that you would like to seek counseling services, reach out for that and reach out to your friends and to your family members, stay connected. That is the thing that we most need to understand during this time is just to be connected with one another because at the end of the day, this is one event that we are all in this together. Mm -hmm. And it is affecting all of us in some kind of way. It may be affecting others differently, but we're all feeling an effect of it. And so connect. That is the, if anything else we can say today, it will be connect, connect, connect. Connect to other people. Be creative. Reach out and find other opportunities 
to intentionally just be with others to have that support. Also intentionally unplug from the, the virtual world. Schedule time from your day to just say, you know what? We're cutting it off. We're cutting off the virtual world because if you're doing school virtually, if you're doing work virtually, if now you've invested in some of these groups virtually, we need a break. They, we have a new, there's a new term out there that's called Zoom fatigue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With Zoom fatigue, everyone, they are just like, you know what? I've been in Zoom meetings all day. I am tired. I can no longer do that. You have to unplug. Take time and say, you know what? I am going to find a new book, read a new book, do some mindfulness. Just think about things of like, you know what? I would like dream, just dream about other things that you would like to do and just get away from the virtual piece. That's where you can play games. You can play board games. You can, now we're, because we're doing so many things virtually and on computers and smartphone phones and tablets, have you pulled out the Monopoly board game in a while? <laughs> it's long, but it's fun. And then you, you think about like, oh, these childhood memories about how fun it was to play Monopoly and how I used to be so excited to be the banker for whatever reason. I don't even know what was the whole excitement about being the banker, but the that money, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You just wanted to be the banker. You, it was that control. Because it's like, I just, I, I, I'm the banker. And so mm -hmm. pull out games like that again. Um, and you can also, you can order these games on pickup. So you don't even have to go to the store. If you say, you know what? I don't have it anymore, but I would like it. Uno, Uno now has so many versions that you, you probably would never stop playing Uno. There's no regular Uno, Uno flip, Uno disco, Uno dare it's so many versions to mm -hmm. end point you'll play uno for the rest of the year and find sure. all new kind of strategies to it so definitely just find other outlets to where you don't have that zoom fatigue you don't have that virtual fatigue and to mm -hmm. say you know what i am still investing in that mental health and that physical health and just do your very best because it's, it's very difficult for everyone. Um, we don't want to say that it's not a difficult time that we're in right now and that it's all just going to be great. But thinking about things that are great each day, if every day you wake up and you say, you know what, what's one great thing? Or when you get ready to go to bed, think of one great thing about the day. Even in the midst of all the chaos, Say, hey, even if it was like, it was great that I ate lunch today. Because even though we, we really take advantage and of the fact that, hey, I took the time to eat lunch. Or I took the time to just take one deep breath. Or I was able, my Zoom account did not log off in the middle of my meeting today. <laughs> one great thing that happened today just think about that because then that could help you just to continue to move through and to survive during this time and of course if there's anything that you need and you're experiencing any kind of crisis to where you feel like oh it is a mental health crisis and you need to talk to someone we do have resources that we're going to post on our social media pages for mm -hmm. you as some local resources and some national resources. But also we have the Georgia Crisis and Access Line and that number is 1-800-715-4225. Again, that is the Georgia Crisis and Access Line, 1-800-715-4225. That number is 24 seven where you you could connect with others and get resources about mental health any time of the day, any time of the night, if you just need someone to talk to. So please reach out, reach out to others for support, check in on each other, form groups, be connected with one another, even though we're socially distant from one another. I'll take it to Elise. 
um, for any questions or any comments. Do we have any comments going through Facebook? Yeah, that's what I've been <laughs> looking at. We've got a lot of a lot of people checking in, saying hello, uh -huh. tagging their friends. So thank you guys for doing thank that. Thank you. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm hearing some from. Okay, we've got some that there are some apps that are free right now for different people. So Headspace is yes. an app that's free for educators um, right now. And mm -hmm. then I believe that was from our friend Jade. Um, and then there's some the Calm app. Um, yes, mm -hmm. is an app that you can download on your phone for meditation and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, and Headspace. Headspace is great. I use Headspace every night. It is great. You can have music and just all kinds of meditation with someone speaking. It's also exercise pieces on Headspace as well. Oh, I, I apologize. I was from Deanna. She posted the headspace and then Jade okay. um, has been commenting some different ways that she is supporting the community. She mm -hmm. works with NAMI. She is an advocate for nice. kids in our area. So we want to say thank you guys for being there. Oh, let's thank see. you. Um, we've got some from Deanna again. We have, um, oh, I keep, you guys are commenting a lot here. We got mm -hmm. some uh, feeling safe at school, supporting students' mental health needs and emotional security. She posted that link in the comments. So you guys go check it out. Um, we wanna hear more from you guys. What are the things that you are doing to take care of yourself during this time? How are you staying connected to your community? Um, I'm, um, oh, Headspace is also, thank you, is also free for unemployed people right now. Very nice, educators. okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, let's see, we got a lot of people here. I want to remind everybody in the comments, there is our survey link. So after we're finished, please click on that. I'm going to also post um, a website that we have that's a PDF from, um, from one of our connections at Fulton County Schools sent it to us. It's about mental health resources. Yes. Let me pull it up and I'll post that also on our page. Oh, we have somebody, uh, Chuck Barlow. Thank you so much. Uh, I recommend first aid mental health training for youth and adults. Yes. 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 Yeah, that is something that um, we can help connect you with. So if there are people who are logging in right now who would like a youth mental health first aid training, that's something that we can set up for you uh, and provide. So please uh, let us know. Um, we would definitely love to be able to do that. Okay, uh, Jade also said the Liberate app is free. Liberate. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of that one. So thank Me you so either. much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so what questions do you guys have? Do you have any questions? I love the resources. This is great. This is exactly what this is for. We're a collaborative. Yes. We're, this is none of us are greater than the other. This is um, all of us working together. Um, I'm mindful of our time. We have a couple minutes before we were planning to do about 30 minutes, not make this too long. Um, so we've got a couple minutes before uh, 1230. Um, so if our, what other questions, do you have questions, guys? Do you have any more resources you would like to share? Or some topics that you all would like for us to present and have speakers on, or awesome speakers that you all know as well. Please let us know, because we are so interested in hearing from you what you think is best for the community. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's see, uh, Chuck also, also commented and said that appreciative inquiry is a practice that um, is helpful. So I just Googled it. So thanks for sharing that because I've, I've heard the word, but I've heard it before, but I don't know exactly what it's about, but it says is a model that seeks to engage stakeholders in self-determined change. So it's strengths-based mm -hmm. positive approach to leadership development and working within organizations. So that sounds amazing. I'm gonna have to keep looking this up. Okay, let's see who else. Thank you so much for posting that. Thank you. Youth and adult reentry. Okay, great. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of different things. Yeah, I think this, what's so important in this is knowing that there are all these things that are available. I mean, yes. um, a lot of this has been around since before the pandemic, but it's just been mm -hmm. highlighted how much we need it. Um, and just want to encourage you guys to find the thing that works best for you. There's no right way to survive a global pandemic. Um, there's, there are things that we can do that are more healthy than others. So we want to work towards health. What are the healthy things that we can be doing for ourselves? So in the context of isolation um, and community, you know, how are we connecting? So thank you guys for sharing these things 
Um, Jade also posted Relax Melodies is an app that you can use. I also know that there's one called Comcast, C-A-L-M. So instead of Comcast, like the uh, provider, internet provider, Com, C-A-L-M, Cast. Um, and um, yeah, so we just want to thank you guys for being present today. Um, it's about so 1230. So I'm going to respect our time. Um, please fill out the survey and don't hesitate to reach out to us and let us know. I'll be I'll be monitoring it. Let's put faces to what's going on behind the social media stuff. It's Tedra and I who are looking at it. And then we meet with our, um, you know, uh, partners. Um, we'll be meeting with them this week just to discuss how this went. So please give us feedback. Uh, and know that all of us are in separate places right now. Right now is just a very difficult time and um, it can feel like you're very alone. But the beauty of it is that we're all in this together. We're all separate, even though Tedra and I are in the same building and we're alone in our offices, we are together in that. We, we can share that experience even though she's not sitting right next to me. So yes. it's know that you know, you're not alone. Um, and this, the South Fulton Mental Health Collaborative is here to remind you of that and help build a community where we can discuss these things, these things without shame or stigma. Um, you are appreciated and you are accepted here. So thank you so, so much for being here. Don't forget to like and follow our social media pages. We're at South Fulton MHC on both Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to have you as a friend and as a follower and we'll follow you back. So make sure that you do that. Okay. So again, uh, Tedra, anything you want to say before we head no. out? No problem. Um, I was just going to say stay tuned and please join us again on August 5th for resetting our routines. So please, we have a special guest that will be coming to speak. So join us again next next week, August the 5th for resetting our routines again at 12 p.m. on Facebook Live. Yep. See you guys next week for resetting our routines. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye.